All right, so let's go part two of astrology and horoscopes. We, uh, <coughs> what, last class was an introduction to the topic. It's a big hakira for when you're learning with Balabatim, if you're allowed to do introductory classes. Because it's like, tachlis, I need a, right? An introductory class is not tachlis. But that's what we did. We ended up doing an introduction. What did we learn? We learned different forms of the influence that the heavenly bo- bodies may have, or that they have, on a human being, Lamata. And we saw in different areas. We saw in character. We saw in terms of Bani Chaim We saw in terms of morality and life, and all of these things being influenced by the Mazalas. And we spoke about how there's a few challenges. One, we raised, and it's like, how is this not avoid the Zara? All of a sudden, there's another boss. We right away put that to rest and we said that we're not talking with, even within the astro, astro, astrological beliefs, we're not talking about uh, entities that have Pekir Chavshis. And so that's really not an issue. But we remain with three big issues. I think three. Number one, what's the difference between the Mazalis and the Vua? If the Stagnine Paroi could look up at the planets and determine what's going to be in the future, then what's unique about Nevoa? Nevoa is like a special thing. That was one issue. The other issue was, what's with Scharva Oynish? How is Scharva Oynish makes sense? And what, where is Pchira Chavshis? Bechayra, we're told that we have Pchira Chavshis, but here it sounds like we don't have Pchira Chavshis. So those are the issues that we are going to be dealing with today. Hi, and Shmuel, you want to... So, the first item for today is the difference between predicting based on the mazel and predicting based on, or, or not predicting, but knowing based on Nevoa. And this, we started on text 14, on page 3, where it's a medrash Shmois Rabbah, and it stalls on the Pasuk like this. My Diksiv, what is the Pasuk where it says in Yeshaya, V'chiyoimru aleichem, and when the Oiv de Avoy de Zara tell you, Dirshu ala Oivois vela Yidoinim, seek out, and seek the advice of the Oivois and the Yidoinim. The Torah tells us that you're not allowed to do Oivois and Yidoinim, these are some sort of magical customs, the different interpretations of what each one is, and Rashi discusses it in Parshat's Kedoshim. Uh, and so uh, there's going to be a time, the Navi says, that they're going to tell you, seek out these uh, people. Um, they whisper and they, they mutter. Uh, so depending on what this uh, thing is, you're coming to the psychic to give you this advice, and he's doing, let's say he's taking a bone, and then he talks, so a lot of times they end up there talking with a low voice and a whispering voice or things like that. And so that's why it's describing these behaviors of Oyves and Yedoinim, uh, the whispering and the muttering. However, Chazal saw a deeper meaning in these two words of Hametzaftasim Magim. They saw here what we call a Neutrikun. A Neutrikun means where you say there's really two words that are, are being conjoined into one. Uh, Metzaftasim it's, and the beginning is hey mem. So hey mem spells the word ma. So it's like mitzaftafim magim, and it's. But we'll separate the the first hey mem, and we'll turn that into an independent word ma. And it's, so it's therefore tzayfim. They're tzayfim. They ain't on yoyde ma tzayfim. So you could read the word as ma tzayfim. So they look, they see, they don't know what they're seeing. Hoigin, they speak. They know yoyde ma hoigin, and they don't know what they're speaking. Oh, so in other words, these uh, people engaged in these activities, they sang stuff, but they don't really know what they're saying. Why? They saw, and we touched on this last week, they saw that Moshe and Shal Yisrael, that Moshe Rabbeinu, his end is going to come through water. And therefore, Amdu Vegazru, they made the Gzeira, Mitzrayim Kal HaBein HaYiloid, and as we saw last week, all children, even non-Jewish children, because they weren't sure where he was going to be born to. That's what they told Parah. Kiva and Shulchan Moshe once he was thrown into the water, Amru, they said, Kfar Moshlach Moshiach Bamayim, we actually didn't have this detail in the Rashi that we saw last week, that they actually came to Parah, and they said, all good, the coast is clear, he's already been Nidoin in Mayim, Miyad Batlach Gzeira, so they stopped the Gzeira, but hein enam yoidim shalmei merivo like they didn't they misinterpreted they thought he was going to die by drowning in reality this was meant something totally different that almei merivo like and so therefore what is the message of this medrash which is darshaning it in a pasuk is that all of a sudden you see the difference between this and the vua 
is that they're saying, but they don't really know what they're saying, because even when they get it right, they also get it wrong. So it's not saying it's totally wrong. It's not saying it's totally wrong, because there's a lot they got right here. They were able to know that Moshe's end was going to come with mine. They were able to know when he ended up touching mine. They also knew that. So that they got right. But even when they got it right, they got so much wrong in the sense that they thought he was going to die by water, and they thought he did die by water, and all of those things didn't happen. And so that would really be the difference between a Mazel, obviously on a Kedusha level and a spirituality level, the answer would be totally different. So what do I mean? Nevoah is a deep communion with the soul and God, and so that's what Nevoah is, and this is not that. Right, but we're looking more Balabatish. Practically, result-oriented, what is the difference between uh, astrology and Nevoah in terms of actual results, is what are you going to be able to know for certain, or is it just going to be, uh, is it going to be uh, highly inaccurate, uh, and that's what the Medrash is saying here. Wasn't Bilam uh, officially a Navi? So then Nevoah is not this, yeah. Wait, to mean, why is that an issue? There's always, even assuming this was correct, why is that? I don't understand the whole question. No, because Nevoah, Nevoah is fine. If you tell me that God reveals himself to someone, you know, for most people is when they're sleeping yeah. or whatever, that's one thing. But here, and, and we also say that you need to be on a spiritual level, even for uh, Billa, he has to attain a, a, a spiritual level, and the Rambam lays out all these levels that you need to climb. Here, it's like, it's like an alternative model. So Nevoah is open to non-Jews. That's fine. But to go outside of the system of Nevoah and to have this alternative model, there needs to be some sort of practical difference, and this is what it is. There's an arichis on this point from Rabbi Yosef Alba in his Sefer Ikrim. The Sefer Ikrim is one of these Makshavas for him, these philosophies for him. Uh, he wrote it in the 15th century in Spain. Uh, th- that's his name, Yosef Alba. It's a Svartish name. And uh, what happened was that he wasn't so happy with the way the Rambam formulated the 13 Ikrim. He felt that although they're all true and important, but if you're looking for the foundational pillars of what Judaism is, there shouldn't be 13, there should only be 3. There should only be 3. And so that's a large uh, a point of his Sefer. But along the way, it, it does seem that he, it's not his only objective. He also wants to talk about Jewish hashkafa, Jewish thought, vis-a-vis the challenges of the, 15th, of the 15th century. So he does that. And he talks a lot, a lot of Machshav and Yonim. The Alter Rebbe, when he had... Um, the Alter Rebbe, he had his Chadorim, where the people had to have like, uh, different knowledge. If, I'm, if I recall correctly, they needed to be Bakri in, uh, in, uh, in Sefer Ikrim. Okay, so he has an Arichis on this, and actually connects to this week's Parsha and the Aftoira of the war of Barak ben Avinoyam and Devoira against Sisra. So, uh, good that we'll spend a few minutes on this. So he says like this, Ulezeh Omer Yeshaya, Kishahoya Misnabe al-Bavel, Yeshaya, when he's saying in a vua about Babel, says as follows, Nileis, you have been weakened, b'roi v'atsasoyich, by the many pieces of advice that you're getting from impure sources. Yamduna, let them stand now, v'yoyishiyuch, and let them save you, hoivrei shamayim, the gazers into the sky. So, hoivrei, the, the word bara means clear. Mitzvah Hashem, bara, beiz reishe is clear. So they, they could only look at the sky when it was a clear day. So that's why they were called Hoivrei Shomayim. HaChoizim Bakoychavim, they look at the stars, Maidiyam Lechadoshim, they give information at the time of the new moon. Why at the time of the new moon? Because that's kind of when the, the birth of the new moon came. So they made the predictions for the next coming month was all made on Rish Chodesh. Ma'ashar Yavayu Alayichen, and they're going to tell you what's uh, going to happen in the future. Um, so you have here a Pasuk where the Navi Yeshaya is talking to the Babylonians and he's saying, go speak to your astrologers <coughs> about what's going to happen to you. Uh, and Chazal made a diik in the words, Me'asher yavoyu aloich, from what will come upon you. And it didn't say what will come upon you. From what will come upon you. So they were with Ayik, V'amur Rabbi, Seinu, Embrace Rabba, Me'asher, from, V'loi kol asher, but not all. Why? Though the stargazers, they can't know the whole truth. Their knowledge is not good enough to know all the causes about the future. And therefore, they can't make a proper judgment. In fact, even things that happened in the past, Shekvar nishlamu kol sibay seim that all their causes already played out. It's something that already happened. The yatsu and it it, it 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 turned into actual fact. Yila sichlam lishpaytu mishpat amiti. Their minds are too weak 
to give and to cast proper judgment in this area. So not only about the future, but even about events that already happened, it's only may asher. They could tell may asher, nishtegan tamaisa. And now he gives his parshanut on the after. As far as I was able, I didn't spend a lot of time, but I spent a little time seeing, is this from anybody else, or is this his original pirush on the after? And it seems this is the original pirush on this week's after. What's the mice in the after? You have a uh, devoira. Devoira is in a via. And uh, the Knanim are uh, occupying and tormenting the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael. This is in the period of the Shoytim before you have the kings. And Sisra was a police man? Anyway, he goes to, he, she goes to Barat and Avinoim and says, you're going to be the general, and you're going to lead uh, uh, the Jewish people to victory. And she, and uh, they, they in fact do that, and they, Sisra is the general. They, uh, Sisra has to flee on foot. He does, he runs away, he takes refuge in a tent of a woman by the name of Yael, who proceeds to give him a drink, he falls asleep, and she then kills him. This is the story, the downfall of Sisra, and it's a big salvation for the Jewish people. Ma kesher to the Pasha, because then you have Atashar Devoira, this long Shira that Devoira and Barak sing. It's very hard Psukim to understand exactly what's happening uh, over there. Are meaning to read that part also? We read, we read both parts? Okay, so it's a very long Aftoira for Pasha's for Pashalach. And, um, and uh, what's interesting is. There's a lot of details in the song that aren't in the story. In other words, she's talking about things, and so there's a lot of the Mepharshim, and even Chazal already said, oh, she said in her song this and this, that's because in the story, this and this happened, even though you don't have it. And that, the Ikrim does that as well. So let's see what he says. Zel Shamra Dvoira Alein Sisra. Dvoira talks about Sisra's mother in the song. Again, in the, the narrative section of Shoftim, Sisra's mother doesn't appear. But in the song, she does. She is being pained by the fact that her sons do home and he's not showing up. She wanted to know why is he not coming. She wanted to know it through Kishif or through astrology or through, I have to Google this. This is geomancy. This is some sort of thing where you make you make signs in the sand, and through that you're able to see into the future or know the past or whatever it is. And here we're talking about a case where the events already played out. Whatever happened, happened. She just wanted to know. She didn't want to know the future, sister's mother. She just wanted to know what happened on the battlefield. She wanted to know the past. So she went, and we're just going to assume it's the astrologers. It could be one of the three. She goes to them. She says, where's my son? So they look. And they say, Ki Sisra, um, they saw in their vision, Sisra Bana Muka Barosha Yadisha. They were able to see that her son, Sisra, was struck in the head by a woman. And these female uh, psychics were able to see Dam the Machane Sisra. They saw blood in the camp of Sisra. They saw that the war was over. The heroes are covered in blood. Ubefrat Sisra, they saw that Sisra is covered in blood, Aidei Shtei Nashim, through two women, which corresponds to Dvoira V'Yael. Okay. Now, so we know what all this means. We know what they saw. They saw Sisra and all of them falling in battle. Obvious, right? Im Kozeh, nonetheless, Lo Yadu Lishpoit Pazeh Mishpat Amiti. They did not know how to see the facts for what they were. They didn't connect the dots. Uh, they, they turned it in accordance with what they wanted it to be. If you, uh, if you read a little bit about uh, the intelligence failures, like before 9-11 or things like that, it's like, but didn't you see this, 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 this? But it's like when you have a certain mahalach of how you're thinking, you kind of like push away everything and you just see what you're seeing in all the, the specific details. And that's kind of what was happening over here. Hafu mishpat kefir they had a certain vision of what should happen here, so they just saw their vision in these events. They couldn't have imagined. It didn't make any sense to them that women should be able to win. They therefore assumed. Why are they late? Those quotes are words in the, in the, in the song. So he's darshaning the words of the song. They're, they're late because they're busy dividing the loot. I, men, became weak or defeated by women. 
they interpret that to mean and you that also is a quote from the Avtairah, is a reference to the womb, a Lurish Gever, I think those words may also be part of the Avtairah, but what they understood it to mean is, they assumed, as often happens in war, is that the, the soldiers who win, take women, and have intercourse with them, and they get tired, so they assumed that that's what the defeat of the men uh, was uh, uh, alluding to here. They saw blood, they assumed, they thought, this is the, the loot that he's going to uh, collect. It's going to be very colorful and have a lot of red and have a lot of beauty uh, to it. So they had a certain understanding of how things ought to play out, and they read that into the narrative that they got uh, from the stars or whichever thing it was. And all of this shows uh, the weakness of the astrologers, Lishpoit's Dovar Aburov, to tell you something clear. Even for something that already happened, where all of the pieces already occurred in, in history. How much more so? In things of the future, they don't have enough, uh, uh, um, enough abilities to be able to tell you what's going to happen uh, in truth. Okay. That's pretty much his point, and he ends on the last paragraph, Vizemi Masha Yoira, and this shows you, Ki Yediyas Hanavi, the Navi, Hadvarim, he, Yediyas Hanavi Hadvarim, he Yediyah Amitis, the Navi knows, it's true, Vi Iyav Shalosh Atichsa Vishumpanim, it cannot be false at all, why? Because that comes from Hashem Yisbarashu, Sibas Kol Asibas, who is the source of all of the sources. Okay, so with that we address the issue of the Nevo. Again, remember, we're working within a model that very much is embracing uh, astrology, as far as we can tell. But we kind of got our first caveat, maybe you could say second. The first caveat we saw at the end of last week was, you're not talking about entities that have any Bechira. No, it's not Bechira, it's all God. But it's being done through these, uh, these forces, are, 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 as we gave the Moshua last time, might as well say it again, just like the cold causes certain feelings in our body, and the wind causes certain feelings in our body, so so too, these heavenly planets have, the, have some type of influence on us. The cold isn't a god. The Abishra put it there. The guys in the So you say the same thing about those heavens. So that's caveat number one. Caveat number two is that if you want to look at the stars, to be able to know what happened, what is happening, or what will happen, good luck. Because you're going to get some true information, you get a lot of hard and uh, not true information. Interpretation is a major issue, and that's how it stands out from the book. But the truth is, the main caveat to astrology comes from the next section of how Chazal dealt with the issue of Bechir Chavshis. Because this is a very important topic, and the truth is, that no matter what one thinks about Bechir Chavshis, it's actually very important today. Let's exit the concept of astrology for a second. In every era, there is always a school of thought that says, uh, you think you have free choice, you don't really have free choice. So today, for example, those sources are uh, more in the fields of neuroscience and psychology. There are schools within neuroscience and psychology that believe that there's almost no free choice, that pretty much everything. Determinism is it's a philosophy that's been around for a very long time, but how it ref- reflects itself and interprets itself in different times, in different ages, is different. And there are fields within modern science that wants to argue this. And in the Middle Ages or before, it was the same conversation. Just instead of talking about genes, and instead of talking about brain cells, they were talking about astrological forces. But if you think about it, there isn't that much of a difference. So really what we're going to learn now is how Chazal grappled with that, because there's like a whole society saying astrology, so you don't have Chira Chavshis. And like, oh, that's a, kind of a threat to Judaism. So how are we going to deal with that? That obviously speaks to the, a similar topic and concept as it relates today. Social media? So, um, what do you mean? It's the issue that uh, religion has. Right, but social media, you're saying, is like the constellations, the uh, stars? Right. Okay. Fine. Zach the Gemara, so let's go back. When we learned that long piece of Gemara from Rabbi Hanina, where he went through all seven planets, and he told you how each one of these planets has an influence on a person's life, he said, look at number 16, he said these words, If you're born under Mars, you will be a spiller of blood. Now right away the alarm bells go off. Because Rab Hanina is a Tana. And Rab Ashi is an Amoira. 
And he right away makes a footnote. It's not a footnote, it's right there in the Gemara. Why do alarm bells go off? So you're essentially saying that if, I, it's that if someone goes and murders someone, and remember, by the way, Rabbah said, hey, yeah, I'm Madim. And then the other rabbi said, yeah, didn't you kill? Right? And so, you, we, so that's a scary thought. Uh, we have uh, here the idea that maybe someone is not to be blamed for the fact that they were a murderer because it was just predetermined and they didn't have choice. So the alarm bells go off and right away Rav Ashi throws in a major qualifier. He says, Amar Rav Ashi, I umana, whether a umana, umana in Talmudic times meant a blood letter. Bloodletting was the standard medicine that you use for almost anything. You're not feeling well, go let some blood. Um, so that was called the uman. E ganova, maybe you'll be a ganov, in which case you may have to use murder to defend your theft. E tabacha, maybe you'll be a butcher. E mahila, maybe you'll be a moil. Looks like what's happening here, there's not, we don't have so, much, so many mafarsh in this Gemara. Most, most of the commentators, by the way, decided, you know, we'll, we'll skip this. We'll talk about some other elements of Gemara Shabbos. But he gives four options here. Only one of them is negative. And it seems that what Ravashi is trying to say over here is, it's, yeah, it is determined that you're going to spill blood, but how you're going to spill blood, that's not determined. So you're locked in in that you're going to be a blood spiller, but you, a blood spiller, spiller could be a very good and a very important thing. What does Ravashi accomplish with this? He solves the Pira Chavshah's problem, because all of a sudden now, when we say that a person is going to be a sp- spiller of blood, no, that does not mean a murderer. And likewise, if you go back to some of the other ones, where it said, for example, someone will have problems with sexual morality, for example. So you would probably come back there and say something similar. It's a certain type of, of, of tendency that could be used in good ways, could be used in bad ways. You're not locked into the bad way. could be used in good ways. So I don't know, in Talmudic times, maybe it meant that he was, before the banner of Gershom, so maybe he was going to have ten wives or something. I don't know, Chvesnish. But you'll figure out a way to make it work. But the point is, Rav Ashi, he doesn't say there, but any one of those things that would seem to be a, cha- um, a, 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 a predetermination for, uh, uh, for morality, he would say, no, that's not, that's not what's happening over here. Now, it's interesting, he chose to say it this way because he could have said it another way. Uh, what he could have said was, you have, you have the tithe to go. What's locked in is that you have the tithe to go, but you could control it. He could have said that. He didn't. He, he said a bigger statement, I think. He said a bigger Kiddush. Kiddush is that you're not, you're not even getting an Atiyah to kill. You're getting an Atiyah to spill blood, which you could do in a good way or a bad way. He could have gone and said another thing. You're going to have a Taiva to kill. But you know something? You're also given a Yetzir Toiv, and Yetzir Toiv also has power. It's going to be able to overcome it. Marcy, he says clearly, Arshi, Dhamma, I mean that blood, he would... Will spill blood. You can't say your answer... Right, it's not so Geshmak in the words. Now, Ashi is much more Geshmak in the words. Ashe Dhamma, you're for sure going to spill blood. Now, but then a good way or bad. Okay. But the truth is, what I'm saying is not so off, because the Goinim, they said this. The Goinim said this. So the Goinim, there's a truth of the Goinim. We don't know exactly which rabbi in the period of the Goinim, but it's someone in Babel, one of the Rabbanim in Babel, 800, 900, something like that, who's asked the question about astrology, and it's a long chuva, and it's hard Aramaic, but just the main Akuda we'll take from there. He says like this, Hachin Chazinan, this is what we see, the Bale Itztagninois, that the astrologers, Hachotim Bekechavim, that are stargazers, have a train Gavni. There are two types. Is Minhoin Mantetole Komili Bemazel. There are some astrologers who say everything depends on the mazel. Va'amri, and they say, Afilu tnudai shaladam, even the movements of a person. Va'afilu rikshushai liboy, and even the feelings of his heart fluyim b'mazel. So this is an extreme astro- astrological position that everything is predetermined, predetermined by the mazalites, says the, who are these people? Non-Jews. The Elain, these people, lays by man the mighty bikuchu none of them believe in God. If you believe that everything is determined by the planets, then by definition it means you don't believe in God. And they're separate. We have nothing to do with those people. That's not okay. Then he goes, the East Minhoin, Ginsach, Rinas, Faran, another school. Damrinon that said, they say, Adam Isa Bechachmase, Dvarin Shalaya Mazal Garman. You could use your intelligence. The deal here is in the word Chachmase. You're a human being. You have a mind. You have a brain. You could use your intelligence to go and do something even though the Mazal isn't, isn't uh, telling you to do it. The Yacho Bedaita, Lakuf, my Degorah Mazal. In fact, you could even use your mind to force and go against what the Mazal is pulling you toward. In fact, here, as well, we also have two schools of thought. 
he goes on, we're not going to read the rest of the paragraph, he goes on to say, where does this come from that a human being has the ability to overcome and fight against what the Mahal told him he, he, he should be doing, draws him towards? He says, this, it could be, you say, because you have an nefesh, and the nefesh of a person is a stronger power, comes from a higher place than the Mazalas, and because of that you have the ability, or he says, because God gave you the power. I'm not sure why he brings both of these, but the bottom line is, in this school of thought, you could force your, your Yetzirah, excuse me, you could force and fight back against the Mazal. So he says like this, Ubein lahani, ubein lahani, the high gin Whichever one of the, these two ways, in this last school of thought, when the mazel of heat comes in its time, I assume that means the passion, a person is able to drink cold, the mitzvah behind to cool down. So he's basically saying that a person, yes, you're going you're gonna to end up having a certain taiva, but you also have the tool to quell it. Same for theft and for chastity issues. For these latter two schools of thought, the only thing the mazel does is a taiva v'te'ova in ba'am, which as Menachem said, is not ma'am is in the Gemara that says, Ashe Dama, but that's what he's saying. He's saying it's only a taiva and a te'ovin. You could hold in your taiva and to uh, overcome it. And then he compares it to the Yetzirah. Just like we say, you have a Yetzirah. Sometimes it gets strong. And it starts teasing us a lot. But still, a person could force it to, 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 to that it should calm down. So, like, if, if we believe that a person has a Yetzirah in him, pulling him towards sin, yeah, so what's wrong saying that you have other forces pulling you towards sin, as long as the diok is the word pulling to or, toward, but not in a way that they have uh, actual say. And so with this, we kind of solve the issue of Bechir a person does remain with Bechir HaChavshis. So, so far, we have three qualifications. Number one, planets don't have Bechir Number two, the, uh, the, if you're looking at the planets, it's, there's going to be low predictive value to them. And number three, a person retains choice. But now we come to the next issue. And the next issue is, okay, fine. But what happens if, we've been again, in that list, there was a whole long thing that said, I'm going to have Bane Chaim I'm not going to have Bane Chaim And it sounded like all this depended on Mazel. What do you mean? Don't we learn that my, my morality and my, my, my merit that makes a determination on what I'm going to have in life. Tshuva, Tfilo, Tztaka, Marvirin is Roya HaGzeira. And here it sounds like, no, there's a Roya HaGzeira that's determined by the planets. And end of story. So this brings us in to the next part of this year. The Gemara, number 18, says as follows. Itmar. Rab Chanina Oimer. Rab Chanina says, Rab Chanina is the, the most famous Talmudic rabbi of, of, in terms of astrological issues. He said like this, Mazel Machim, the Mazel makes people smart, Mazel Mashir, makes you rich, Yesh Mazel Yisrael, and Mazel applies to Jews. Okay, obviously for him to say, Mazel applies to Jews, is because he had heard someone say, it doesn't apply to Jews, so he went out of his way to say, that it does apply to Jews. Rabbi Yechanan Omar, Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan says, Ein Mazel Yisrael. No, there's Mazel Okay, now the child had to touch this. For now, we'll touch. There's no mazel yidin. This whole thing doesn't affect yidin. Oh, wow. The whole thing doesn't affect yidin, so I just wasted a lot of your time right now in terms of Pekir Chavshis, for example. The whole thing doesn't affect yidin? So no, I didn't waste your time right now. As we're going to see, uh, no one really believes that a mazel Yisrael means mazel doesn't affect yidin at all. We'll see that what they're going to say is that it's not set, it's not locked in. So the mazel may say that I'm going to have 120 years in life, but it's not locked in. There's something I could do to change it to get 130 years. And that's what a mazel Yisrael means. It's something that we're able to change. 
Okay, he derives it from a Pasuk. What's the Pasuk? Va'azer Rabbi Yechanan letamei. Rabbi Yechanan follows his reasoning. Domer Rabbi Yechanan elsewhere he said, Menayin she'em ma'atol Yisrael. How do we know that ma'atol doesn't apply to Jews? Shenemar, koi amar Hashem. This is what God said. Al derech ha'goyim al tomadu. Don't learn from the Gentiles. From Eitzes ha'shamayim al techasu. Don't be afraid of the heavenly signs, meaning the heavenly bodies. Ke yechatu ha'goyim ehem. Because the Gentiles are afraid of it. So heim yechatu v'lo Yisrael. They're going to be afraid and not you. And the Gemara then goes on to bring four or five support, Rabbanim, Tanoim, and Amaroim, who support this idea of Ein Mazel Li Yisrael. Where do we see this? So I'll bring just two of them. You have the teaching, 19, the Af Rav, also Rav, Savar, Ein Mazel Li Yisrael, he also holds Ein Mazel Li Yisrael. Domer of Yodom, a Rav, for Rav Yodom, said in the name of Rav, Minayin she'em Azul Yisrael, how do I know? Shenemar Vayoyte, Yisrael Chutza, God took Avram Avinu outside, what is it? He took him outside, but Pasha means he took him out of his tent to see the stars. This is by the Brisbane Absarim. Chazar are gonna do God took him out of the system of the astrological system. That's gonna be the drasha. You'll see in a second. Amar Avram was not Kodesh Baruch because Avram said to God, "Then then Beiti Yoyish Oisi Yishmal is gonna be my my heir." Amar Lo Love, no, Eliezer is gonna be my heir. Amar Lo Love, Ki Ima Shayete Memeach, no, it's gonna be your child. He told the I looked at my astrological information. This is a to the thing. Avram Avinu looked at his astrological information. I see. I'm not ready to have a child. I'm not going to have a child. Here's the Vayoyte Oisachuta. God took him out. Say me stagninishacha. Go out of your astrological calculations. Why should you go out of your your calculations? Because you're a yid and in Mazali Yisrael. My daitach, God continues. What's your thinking? The koi tzedek v'mayrev that Jupiter is in the west? Ma'adarna. Now, what does it mean that Jupiter is in the west? That you were born, you were born under the hour of Jupiter. And at that time, it was in the west. And Rashi says, I don't know what this means, that the west is a cooler climate and the east is a warmer climate. And so cooler is, represents infertility. So therefore, you were born under Jupiter and Jupiter at the time was in the west and so therefore you're not ready to have a child. I'll turn it around and put it in the east. What does that mean? What you, he, this was 20 years. He was born 80 years ago. What's, what do you mean you're going to turn in the east? I don't know exactly what that means. But the point is, what's the main thing here? You see, it's not, don't say... I can't have a child because the Mazel says, I can't have a child, I can't have a child. Then we're not talking about morality here. Here we're talking about Chayim Mazayna. Don't say you can't happen. Look, the Abishter broke it for Avram Avinu. Here we see a Mazel Yisrael. This is, so now we have two uh, of the Tanoim and Amaroim. We have Rabbi Yechanan and Rav. And then we get, Umid Rabbi Kiva Nami, a Mazel Yisrael. And here it goes and says the famous story that we all know from Rabbi Akiva. What's the story that Rabbi Kiva Havale Barte, she, he had a daughter, Amrele Kaldoi, the Chaldeans, meaning the stargazers, told him, <coughs> just like Rabbi Yosef. doesn't say he asked, it just says the Chaldeans told him. Hahu Yamed Da'olyelevei Ganana, that's the Yud Shvat connection. On that day that she's going to go to her Gani Lignuni, right? Gnuni is a chupa. The day she's going to get married, Tarek Lechivya, a snake's going to bite her, a Misa, she's going to die. He was very worried. Now, what does that tell you he was very worried? He took astrology seriously. Otherwise, you wouldn't worry, right? That day, she uh, took her, whatever the thing in her hair, that's the begudah, she poked it into a wall. It just happened, and it went into the eye of the snake and killed it. The tzafra in the morning, when she, woke, when she took the snake, she took the headband, have a so she was dragging it, and the snake came out following the pin. So the father said, Wow, amazing. Obviously, you must have a major schos. Evening time, a poor person came. He was knocking on the door. And everyone was busy with the meal. No one heard him. So I got up. I took my meal. The athlete that you gave me. And I gave it to him. So Rabbi Kiva said to the daughter, Mitzvah of Adit, you did Mitzvah. I mentioned last time, I think. The al Rebbe says that Stam Mitzvah is Tzedakah. It's also, he says it's Yerushalmi, but here you see, Mitzvah of Adit, about Tzedakah, it's a Mitzvah. Navag Rabbi Kiva Udrash, 
So Rabbi Kivu came and went and made a drasha. Tzedakah tatzvah mamavit, tzedakah is going to save you from death. V'loi mimitza mishuna, alo mimitza atzvah. Not only from, the, that instead of having a mitza mishuna, I'll have a normal death. No, even from death to life. Now why is that last line important over That last line is very, very important. Why? Because someone come along and say, everything's set. It's all set by the, by the astrology. Remember then, ah, you could change it. That instead of having a horrible death, you have a good death. Right? The person, that's the leeway that you have. No, so Rabbi Kiva was coming and saying in Chiddush, that it's not only from a bad death to a good death. Astrology, it, it, the hold that it has on the future is so weak, that through the mitzvah, you could actually go from death to actual life. This, this. So what do you see from here? A mazal Yisrael. But now we're very clear. What's a mazal Yisrael? A mazal Yisrael is for a man who heard, who heard what the astrologer said. Who took it seriously? Who was worried about it? And what they said happened. What they said happened. A snake mama's got that close to her. So all of a sudden, a mazal Yisrael should not be interpreted the way we thought the first time we saw the line. No, oh, the whole thing doesn't apply to Jews. Doesn't sound that way. What it sounds like is a mazal of our Bane Chaim It's not locked in Li Yisrael because there's an escape hatch. It's there. It's something. It's it's important. But you have the escape hatch. What's the escape hatch? That is the mitzvah that you have here. The Eivisher could do it by Avram. The mitzvah could do it that you have here, and that's what Pashas what Rabbi Yochanan meant. In fact, when we look at the Mefarshim, we see them say this clearly. They say. A mazal Yisrael means that you could change it. Which then, now I need you to think about this. What does Rabchanina say? Yes, mazal Yisrael. What does that mean? The pastures now? That it's not changed, it's immutable. So in other words, Rabchanina has a shitta that basically says that the uh, sorry, the Evisha created the world. He created a certain thing in Teva and he put people in, just like you, today we would say, you know, he, he put, some people were born with bad genes. So, and there's nothing you can do about it. You have a Shailon Nebuchadnezzar, sure, okay, so you have a Shailon Nebuchadnezzar, but that's what he did. And there's, there's nothing you can do to change it. Or just say, um, uh, or, I would like to fly. It would be great if I knew how to fly, right? I, but, sorry, it's locked in. You're a human being, you're not flying. So, Rab Khanina seems to give a very similar thing for Bane Chaim It's locked in. It's locked in, there's nothing you can do about it. Now the Mephar should come and clarify, that's only about Mazel Machim, Mazel Mashir. You have to die in his words. That for your intelligence, yeah, sorry, you're not changing it. For your money, sorry, you're not changing it. For Adichus Yom, sorry, you're not changing it. But for your morality, that he's, he's not arguing that. For morality, of course, Rabbi believes in Bechir HaChoshis. You, you can't have a Hoyim Shemay Tishmu without that. So clearly he believes in Bechir HaChoshis, that, yeah. But, then again, destiny, then again, success in life, and that, he holds it like completely locked in. Rabbi, the other ones, Rabbi Yochanan and Rav and Rabbi Kiva, what do they hold? It's something, it has a force, but it's not locked in. And you see that in Rashi. Let's look at Rashi, where he says, Yesh Mazi Yisro, what does that mean, Rabbi Chanina? Ain't Tfilo Tzedakah Meshana Tzamafo. Sorry, Tfilo Tzedakah is not changing it. Ain't Mazi Yisro? Not that there is no Mazal. It's that through davening and through having tzchusim, you're able to change it. Uh, 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 you're able to change it. Okay. Then the question becomes, okay, so within this model, how, how, how much power do you have to change it? In other words, I give you two models. One is you could change it 1% of the time. Another model is you could change it 99% of the time. One model is, you say, you change it if you do something drastic and amazingly meritorious, like crazy Mr. Nefesh, then well, you'll be able to change it. Or you say, yeah, Stama Krishna Shalomita could change it. Okay? So two points. Number one, how, how common is it to change? Common. Through your schos. And how easy is it? So you look at the Rishonim, it's actually interesting. They use different language, and they have different views on this question. So look at Toysus. Toysus says, we say, a Mazel Yisrael. One second, how do we say a mazal Yisrael? We learned, which means you could change it, we learned, oh, that very troubling statement that we saw last time. So we saw that there was a view that said, is only mazal, no schos. So how can we say that you could change it through mazal? Here, here, here we saw Rava saying, you can change it through mazal. So really, one answer is that that's Rav Chanina. That Rava follows Rav Chanina Shita. And if Rav Achal, Rav Chanina Shita, then that's a very simple solution to this problem. But Taisa doesn't go that. What does he say? 
He says, yeah, it's totally mazal, mekomachem, it is chuz godol mishtana. Now compare this toysvis to Rashi. Rashi said, I had still unstuck, you change it. Toysvis, you need a chuz godol. Look at the Rashba in 23, when he talks about changing it. Ela shepa'amim ha-kadosh baruch hu oisa nefli deyav, levatom and teres ha-kamim. Pa'amim, once in a while. Pa'amim, I think that's what it means. Pa'amim is once in a while. And oisa nef, it's a miracle. Okay, so basically you have a sliding scale here, and if you look at the Rishonim, when they talk about this, you can see more and more of this. Some of them say, yeah, there's the mazel there, but Stan, when you wash my machreinim right away, just doing a small mitzvah, you, you clean off 90% of it or something like that. And some say, oh no, no, no you got to do something like drastic, and it's like a miracle that happens. So you end up having a spectrum within, uh, within this uh, particular view. Okay, so let's conclude now with the following. First, let me tell you what's coming because uh, I want you to know. First of all, we're learning here that this shita is only l'shitas who? Rabbi Yechman. Rabbi Chinina says, excuse me, yeah, l'shitas Rabbi Yechman. And Rabbi Yechman makes a distinction between Jews and Gentiles. In other words, everyone agrees when they get a goyim, it's locked in. Okay, so we're going to see some interesting Rabbi testimony. What? Locked in. We'll see... Interesting testimony, what the non-Jews said, Bizman Ashas, about this. So that's one thing that's going to come uh, about themselves and about Jews. That's going to be one thing we do next week. Then the next thing is the Rambam. Because the Rambam is going to say that everything that we learned is not true. Everything. And as I said last time, I'll say now, that's obviously, how do you say that? How do you say, well, so we're going to see how perhaps to understand uh, this Rambam, and other, a few other Rishonim join him, and then the Shaila comes, Maisa B'poyal, after you get, you see that, Machlaikas of the Rishonim, so Maisa B'poyal, is it mutter for a person to read their horoscope, uh, or not, uh, so that's that. Then, the other thing is the Rebbe, the Rebbe actually has a number of letters, on this uh, issue, that's another thing we need to do, and then lastly, this doesn't happen so much, but that line that we said, that Rava says, Bane Chaim is not Tali and Tzchus, but it's Tali and your Mazel. And, okay, Toysus just softened it a little and said, yeah, normally, but through a Tzchus Gadol you could change it, but that's not really a satisfactory uh, type of thing. This is one of the cases where Chassidus comes along and says, usually Chassidus adds a Pirush Pnimi, but doesn't negate the Pirush Apashat, as we're going to see, Chassidus is going to negate the Pirush Apashat clearly. It's going to say it's not talking about astrology at all. So those are the things that we need to, uh, that we'll continue to cover as, uh, as we, uh, we should, I think we'll finish next week. I think we will finish uh, next week. Okay, if we could dive a night of now, it's 8.47. Let's, let's dive a night